Good morning, good morning guys. Back at it again. Holy moly, what's going on here? We got the big uh, 28,000 gallon Aquamate tank going in today. We got the whole crew going on here, working hard. It's kind of nice, I don't have to do everything. So we check out this tank. The entire tank fits in this crate here. It came from all the way from Australia. Might, 2,500 pounds. And then we got all the roof panels right there for the tank and we are good to go. Lots of cool stuff in here. So the nice thing about corrugated steel is how nicely it stacks up there. Right on. So the first step of getting the tank installed is the guys are getting all the corrugated steel pieces um, loosely in place so they're not tightening the bolts down just yet. Um, but they're just getting it loosely in place and then we'll uh, cinch them down in just a little bit. Nobody's afraid to be on camera. No. Yeah, Nobody. No, no outstanding warrants or <laughs> anything like that. I say that kind of jokingly, but also kind of serious at the same time because there was a guy that was working on the concrete slab uh, for the garage who um, had never paid federal income tax. So he's like, I don't really want to be on camera. But the guys are just working here, getting all the uh, all the pieces in place, and they use these steel stakes here. Um, I'm sure somebody can tell me exactly what they're called. Um, that just helps them align the uh, the bolt holes up so that they can get all the bolts on the inside and then get a nut on the outside. Um, they just kind of get everything loosely in place here, get it all constructed, and then in just a short time they go and basically bolt everything and tighten everything down pretty nice. But it's really cool how these tanks go together in just a number of small pieces like that. It's very easy to make these tanks very small but also at the same time make them much larger as well. So there's a certain method and a certain kind of uh, process for, for putting these pieces into place um, in terms of how they're doing their overlaps and all that kind of stuff. It's all very specific, uh, but you can see the full size of the structure here. So there's th it's just three panels up. Um, so the overall tank height is just about seven foot three. And you can see all the bolts there just loose. And you can see the overflow hole right there. So everything was already pre-cut and makes installation a lot easier. And then this two inch curved piece of steel that goes around the top not only makes the top obviously much more rigid, but then it also gives them a place to screw the roofing panels to. What do you got going on here, Rick? Well, we protect this edge right here from the liner. And this is really sticky stuff. It's got fibers going both directions. And then you'll also see we're going to protect uh, some, with some fabric going down over the bolt head. Next, once I do these horizontal seams with the tape. Then we actually use uh, strips of liner material that go over these bolts uh, on every row around the tank. Perfect. So I've got two horizontal lines right now, this one and this one down uh -huh. here to do, and then uh, then we'll start doing the, hor the vertical strip. So the roof trusses are assembled on site here. Um, for this size of tank, it's just three separate pieces, and they're just bolted together there. And the ends of it will screw into that top two-inch piece of curved steel. Um, so you'll see that in just a moment here. Um, but what John is doing here is attaching some of the uh, some of the membrane um, going across those bolts. Um, so that just makes sure that when the liner is in there, um, it's not going to be rubbing up against those uh, those carriage bolts there. And it just gives an extra level of protection for the uh, for the liner. And you'll notice that he's leaving some slack there. So slack is really good with this stuff, so that um, it doesn't pinch or anything like that. And he's putting a little slit in there because on the outside of the rubber membrane or the liner, um, there's actually tabs that go through that little slit there and then get bolted to the side of the tank. And the roof trusses go in nice and easy. Um, so once the guys get it into place, 
they drill a hole through the bottom and then also through the top and drop a bolt through and then that gets obviously tightened up and then you have some nice supports for the roofing panels to sit on and as you see this go together it's really not that complicated um, it goes together pretty easily um, but like I said, it's not necessarily DIY friendly for a first time installer. So this is the six inch overflow fitting. So it just kind of fits perfectly into place there. Um, and then there's a washer that goes on the outside that holds it into place, uh, which you can see Rick is holding right there. So why are we putting this down there, John? It'll protect the liner. Now on a base like you have here, we don't have a lot of issues, but in other parts of the country, they'll use um, crushed granite it's supposed to be quarter inch or less and it'll protect the, uh, any angulars on the stones and they'll protect the liner so it's just right on in, in case of so once the carpet layer is down then the guys can start unfolding the liner here now this is where things definitely start to get a little bit trickier and this is where the experience definitely comes into play with these tanks is that you want to get this liner in the exact right spot. You wanna be attaching it in the correct way um, just so that you're not gonna have any major issues down the line. Um, but yeah, it just unfolds very easily and it fits the tank perfectly. They test these for any leaks um, in their factory before it ever hits a job site. So they know if there's ever gonna be any issues with it beforehand. And then those little slits that we cut in that membrane, um, there's a little tab on the outside of the liner that gets attached to the framing of the tank there. So that's why they leave that one little bolt out um, because the outside of the liner gets bolted right to the tank. So once they get the liner laid out exactly how they want, then they can start flipping up the edge of the liner over the edge of the tank there. You'll also notice later on is that there's a lot of slack in the liner and that's done on purpose. They don't want it tight. And just with the pressure of the water it could possibly tear the liner. Um, so a lot of extra slack is left inside the tank for that reason. They cut around the trusses there and we're basically ready to move on to the next step here. So once the liner is in place, they can finish off all the different fittings here. Um, so there's a combination of these washers and silicone that is used to make a watertight seal around any of these fittings here. And the overflow is just very simple like that and they just attach a 90 on the end here. And that's pretty much it. So when the tank is gonna overflow, it'll just go through that 90 there and uh, yeah, out to a basin that'll probably put on the other side of that gabion wall that I did. All the tanks come with both a drain valve, which is right at the bottom of the tank, and then also just your standard water line, which is just uh, one corrugation above it. And all the fittings fit perfectly with the, uh, with the corrugated steel there and everything goes together really nice and smooth. I was really impressed with how everything went together uh, just so smoothly and the tank only took one day to build so that's pretty awesome and you can see Rick here is actually using his channel locks in the correct direction or in the correct way um, as opposed to what I always mess up when I'm doing it on video so around the perimeter of the tank there's this black uh, mesh stuff that they stick on top of there it's like a bug screen um, just with the roofing panels being corrugated there might be some gaps in there so what that black mesh does um, or what that bug screen does is prevent any bugs or any nasties getting into the tank from the uh, from the outside. The tarp that they installed over the tank for the installation I thought I'm like man is this really necessary but it was definitely necessary because it was in the high 90s that day and that extra bit of shade made all the difference. So the guys are screwing down the roofing panels just like any other corrugated steel roof. It goes together nice and easy just with some self-tapping screws. So the roof itself does have pitch to it. It's almost like a dome shape. And one thing that is gonna be installed on the tank very soon when we get the pieces in the mail are the rain saver gutters so that the collection surface, or sorry, the roof of the tank becomes a collection surface as well. So at being 27 feet in diameter, um, it'll add an extra 500 square feet of collection surface. So for our system, it actually adds about an extra 10% of collection surface in this area. So what Larry's doing right here is he's going around the bottom of the tank and just making little notches, cutting little notches in the roof so that uh, when John comes around with the uh, with the power snips here, he can just follow those little those little notches that were cut through so that they can finish off the roof and get a nice perfect circle for going around it. 
So once the roof has been cut, Rick is going around and then just trimming off any of the extra liner that is overhanging on the sides of the tank, obviously to clean everything up. Um, but that's pretty much it in terms of the insulation. And obviously they have some nice covers for those upright pieces. And um, I got the optional fascia, the extra fascia package, just to really kind of clean up the edge of the tank and make it look a little bit nicer. And that's pretty much it, man. That is the entire tank installation, um, as well as this access hatch that goes in there. So if I ever need to get into the tank for any reason to do any cleaning or anything like that inside of it, then I have that access hatch there. So this is the basket strainer that comes with these Aquamate tanks, and they're the only one I know of in the industry that has a baffle on the bottom so you don't get sunlight coming through this open basket strainer into the tank creating algae. So the water goes through this fine mesh metal screen and it drops onto this uh, baffle and then the water comes out all these cracks all the way around it, um, flows out and drops into the tank. Okay, Too And easy. we've already installed a metal ring. There's a couple little wing bolts that go through these two holes right here that hold it in securely in place. So I'm uh, going to put that in right now. And here's the final tank install. Looks fantastic. I love it. 